क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द केस स्टडी ऑफ यूनिवर्सल डी बी टू आई बी एम डेटाबेस एंड नाउ टूडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट द स्कीबल वेरिएशन एंड एक्सटेंशन एंड ऑल्सो द क्वेरी प्रोसेसिंग ऑप्टिमाइजेशन द क्लस्टरिंग द इंडेक्सेज द फंक्शन ऑन दिस आई बी एम डी बी टू डेटाबेस IBM DB2 internal or the universal database is an extension of the SQL as it is considered to be the most important and popular business related databases it follows all the variations of SQL 2003 and some extensions that is related to it it is mainly invented by the IBM that is why IBM DB2 is the name of this universal database Let us start with the SQL variations and the extension that we have on this universal DB2 databases. First is the XML features that we have on this DB2. As this DB2 includes this XML features and we can use the XML element to create an element tag. Say suppose that we are creating XML element book. That means we are calling a function XML element to create the book element on this tag. Now to define the elements attributes we can use the xml attribute specification which is also a feature of xml now either it is the attribute or a sub element it is decided by this xml attributes function next is the xml forest arg that means it is the arguments from which we can create an xml forest or an xml elements of sequence that means it is the sequence of most of the xml elements Next is the XML concat. So the XML concat concatenates two values of two variables. See here for v1 and v2. If we use the concat, we will have an v1 v2 as a result. Now the XML serialize feature serializes the function ordering. That means it will make a transaction on the function serializable on this XML serialize. Now let us implement all these features and see an XML code how we can create with these features. Before moving to the XML features example on the query, there are two more additions that we have on this DB2 to the XML. One is the XML AG. So it is also like an XML concat, but it returns a concatenated value or the summation of value of XML AG. Now this XML to CLOB is in data type where it is featured with the CLOB data type that is a character large of data. and it is the xml version that we are using for xml2 club now let us go for an query that we can produce with this xml features first we are selecting an xml element that we are creating with name po so now we are creating an xml element of the purchase order so we will give some attributes to it so the product id and the order date are the xml elements attributes now we are having the xml ag to aggregate this xml element name item with this attributes with another element to have the concatenated value so now we can see that we are aggregating or adding the value and returning it to the select statement of the element item with item id quantity and ship date and the xml element item description with the name and price of this item now we are selecting the xml element product order from the relation product So now my XML aggregate that we are selecting the item and this item description. This is from product where the product ID of this item is equals to the line ID of this item that we are selecting this XML element from. So this from is for this select and this from is for the outer select. Finally, we can have this select and the from orders. So if we see from the outer one, we are selecting the orders POID equals to three forty nine with the orders and for the order the line item where the line item match the product information where we are aggregating or having the concatenation of item and item description and finally selecting the product order or the purchase order for that product. Now, if we put this one as an XML, then the supporting XML document for this IBM DB2 will be first we are creating a product ID or the purchase order with the product ID three forty nine and order date this. Now we need to insert the items for this product. Now, other than using the UST here or the price, we can make the price as an create of distinct type with this IBM DB2 features. 
we can do it as so in this way we are creating the usd as the type for decimal 8 comma 2 and if we define the price as this usd then we do not need to mention thousand usd here we can just use the value thousand now if we want to make an query on this data that we have inserted we can do this like now the value thousand will be converted to the type usd that means thousand point zero zero and price is greater than this then we will choose the product from this us cells now for creating the complex data type in IBM DB2, we can either use the primitive type or the use of complex data type. So now we are creating the type that is department T as in complex type, where we can have the primitive as well as the complex type. So we have three primitive types where the department name and department has as the varchar type and the faculty count as an integer. Now we can make this one how and DB2 mode, then we need to mode with DB2. So by giving it a DB2 SQL mode, that it goes for an IBM DB2 universal database. That means now it can be implemented in a structured type where it can be supported by any of the primitive programming languages. Now to create a point inside this DB2, we use the X and Y as in point variable. Now one can make a table or a data type out of this department T and point T both. So now my department table will be created on this type department T. Next, other than the created functions that we have in predefined DB2 variables, we can also create the UDF or the user defined function. Now, let us create a user defined function so that we can use the maximum variables that we can introduce inside a universal DB2. Just like the SQL, we use the create function to create a function. So now we are having the operation the G1X mean, the G1X max the g1y mean and the g1y max as the arguments to this function. Now what is the function will return by returns the integer. Now we have two more features that is specific and the external name. The specific is the name by which it will be compiled by this db2. We generally use the specific as the name we provide as a function name. And there is one external name that can be used as the user name or the file name. We can put the same name as the specific or we can create a new username by keeping it in the braces. The next is the language and the parameters supported by it. The next one is in deterministic. That means the function is in deterministic nature. So it will determine that what value they are using and how much value they can produce of it. By using the keyword fenced, we means that our function will be fenced. That means we cannot go far out of the boundary for this function values. And if we want to our function make it a not fenced, that means that can go out of the boundary, we can just use the keyword not before the fenced. Now if we use this thread safe, that means we are using it for the safe on this function that is thread. That means if we are process dividing the function on different threads, then it is safe to execute that function in different threads concurrently. It will also can be called on null input. So these are the features that we can define by an UDF. Now this one is called on null input. That means the function can be called on null input too. So this is for the function definition. That means here we are not defining that what the function will perform, but giving the prototype of what the function can do. Next is about the index extension of this DB2. See, there are two types of index extension. One is special index extension, another isn't concentrated. In the concentrated index extension, we can use just the index as the SQL indexing. But in the special index extension that it needs to create, that it is special in nature. That means the index are skewed. So there are many more empty spaces in this index of the DB2. Now we will create and see that how we can construct a special index in DB2 SQL. By using the keyword create index extension, that means we are extending our index into a special one. Then followed by it will be given an index name. Say we want to create the indexed extension for the file or the function that we have created. So just like the function, in index also we can give some arguments. That means it will be the attribute names on which the index will be extended. Say our index is having three variables GS1, GS2 and GS3. 
Next is that on which index we are creating. So from source key, we need to give the relation name on which we are creating the index. Now the keyword generate key using goes with that key will be generate as a special index on the index extension. So we are creating a function GSC create IDX key generation from the geometry relations C1 colon index goes with an XML element. So now we can give this colon to indicate the particular attribute. So this is the key that we are generating using the function where we are having this S rate X min X max Y min Y max and GS1 GS2 GS3 for generating the keys. See from source key we are having this relation on which we are creating the sources using this key and the target key is the key names which will be appeared in the index. So this SRS ID level GX, GY are the integer variables and now my X min, X max and Y min, Y max that we will have in the index are my double variables. Now on which the index is being made, there can be also some functions or methods on which the index can be made. Say for instance that we have created the functions with some conditions and actions. So on which the best we will get the index validified and nullified with these conditions. So we can go with the search methods followed by the conditions and actions that we want to go. So this is the query for creating the index extension for a special index. Now what are the web services that can be provided by this DB2? Let us see an query which can be used just like a normal SQL query where we can use the web service. That means now my query can be placed inside an XML or say can an web service which we can be acquired by this DB2 interface. Now look at till here that we are having and selecting the transaction ID amount and debt from the transaction relation where the customer ID equals to input. That means this is the web service that the XML on this IBM DB2 provides us that we can get an input from the user as the web service to generate the customer ID on which we can base the transactions and select the ID amount and debt from it. Now this web service is called as get recent activity web service. Now this activity requires the input on which the attribute will be given. So after being generated the list, it will select only the first row, that means the first one row, that will give us the top row of this result. So now using this get recent activity, we are getting the recent activity on the customer ID or who is the last customer to get the transaction. Now here we are using another web service that is get quote. The get quote returns a numeric value against each of this ticker ID. Say for the ticker ID for a portfolio goes with P01, P123. Now other than using this one as in combination of both the numeric and character values, we can have the numeric value by the get quote web service. Now one unique feature that can be provided with this DB2 service is a buffer pool service. In the buffer pool, we can create a storage area or the buffer pool where we can have all the databases and extract that particular pool on this buffer we want to execute. Now we can create a buffer pool like, now say that we have created a buffer pool names BP and the size was not mentioned. Now I want to create or alter my buffer pool to the size 10 so that we can have maximum 10 buffers in that pool. So we can use that with an alter command. So in this way we can create a 10 number of buffers within this buffer pool. Now another unique features of this DB2 database is that it provides a multi-dimensional clustering. That means not only a different data type, but also it can go for a multi-dimensional data type where one data type can be associated with many dimensions. So let us create a table where we can put this multi-dimensional clustering. So we are creating a table cells with the store ID as the end, the order debt, ship debt, and the receipt debt as debt. The region as an integer value, that means now there will be no string region, but associated with it, we can get a numerical region. We can also generate this by the get code region. Now let us look here that we have created an year OD, the year of this order as an integer, which can be generated from the order date. So now it is an derived attribute that we can generate from this order date. 
Now we can organize this table with some dimensions. Now the dimensions should be the properties or the attributes that already belong to this table. So now this table will be organized by the dimensions region, your OD and item ID. So it is not a single dimension on which it can be created. So now if we can build a table on this, this will be a cube because it has three sides or three edges that is associated to it. So it will more look like that if the cube is looking, then we can have this cube as one side belongs to the region, one side belongs to the year OD, and the other one as the item ID. So any cross tab that belongs to here, it will be crossing region and item ID, here year OD and region, and here year OD and item ID. So this cube or this dimension we are having not a single one but a multi-dimensional. So we need to compute a compatibility matrix to store the result in this form. Now for the query processing and optimization in DB2, first we can process and query and then we can optimize it in a graphical explanation. First we can process and query and then we can have a graphical explanation of that query. So let us first define a query and then process it inside this DB2 Universal Database. To process a query, we need a query name first. See what we are having, we are summing up and pointer variable. So not only the direct value that we can process, we can also go for the pointer to get an aggregate function and use this query as some aliases. So now we are selecting the table, the TPC is customer, order, line item and region where we can give the condition just as a normal query. So now we are having the join as the customer key equals to the order key and the region belongs to the middle list and the order date is greater than the 1st January of 1995. Why I have used the date function to convert it into a proper date type. Now what does this plus one year suggest for? That it is greater than 1st January 1995 to 1st January 1996. So how I have achieved this plus one year? That means it will take the year from the date and get a plus one with it. So this is the query that we need to produce. And now we see that how we can optimize it inside a graphical explanation. See first as the end of the tree or the leaf node of this tree will have the relations to it. So whatever the relation we have the query, we will put it into the end leaf. So they are the customer, the order, the line item and the region. Now we need to scan every field on this relations and then sort it and then join it. So now first we need to join the customer and the region and then on this we have to the order with this join and finally we will hash join with the line item. Now we need to produce the shorting again on this hash join. After that the scanning and now finally we had the group by clause in our query so we need to again put that. After that we had order by so we again need to sort it. Finally, we need to scan the sorted result for the combination or the conditions that we need to put there so that we can have our result. So this is the optimization on the query that we can make on this IBM DB2 Universal Database. So that is all for the IBM Universal Database. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.